G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with Dia and welcome to another pre-season team preview. Today I have two absolute legends of the community to talk about their beloved Dons and some players that I must say I'm taking a real sniff at this year. First of all, everyone will recognize this man, one of my great mates in the Supercoach community, a wonderful human, could not meet a nicer bloke and a more hardworking bloke when it comes to creating content with my man, Big J. It is Joe from the Centre Bounce. Thank you very much for joining us, mate. How have you been, my man? Oh, mate, dear. How can I possibly be bad when you're pumping me up like this to start off an episode? <laughs> I'm here to talk about the Bombers. I get to wear my Bombers gear. I'm with you and with Harry. And you give me this pump up. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. I've got the trifecta, Quinella, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a gambling man. I am doing very well. Thank you so much for having me on, man. No, not a worry, mate. And uh, it is always an absolute pleasure, mate, to be speaking with you. And uh, the other man, look, if you caught our Supercoach Swordplay community pod, you will be familiar with this great bloke. He's one of my great mates, again, in the Supercoach community, been a long-serving member of my channel and a super coach stalwart in his own right. It is my man H. Buddy, how have you been? Thank you very much for joining us again. Yeah, I've been great, DR. Thanks for having me on. Um, it's a real pleasure to be on the show again. Um, thank you for the invitation. And uh, I've been really well, thanks. I've just doing some um preseason sort of uh you know um preseason sort of um investigating and things like that, especially with the with the bombers and um, all over Supercoach in general, but yeah, I've been I've been good. Thank you very much. It's been great. Beautiful, mate. Now I know that uh, H, you've been playing the game for a long time. Got a very important cash cashy that you're involved with each year as well, mate. So hopefully they aren't listening in today because I think that you two blokes are going to give us some of that good juice as we get into this preview. So boys, we might as well start to rock and roll quickly before we do. Obviously, Eston have just the one buy, which is round 14. So Joey, do you think that's a friendly buy going into the season, mate? I definitely think it's better than starting off with an early buy because it means you're going to be playing these players, especially your premiums for, I suppose, the most number of games that you can possibly have them. And I think with the premiums that we have on offer, they are going to be players that you are more than happy to field every single week. So I definitely think having the round 14 buy is certainly better than Carlton, you know, and, and in any situation where you're comparing Essendon and Carlton, we're definitely a lot more better than Carlton. <laughs> Always going to drive by to Carlton, love it. <laughs> tough Carlton. It's all about the bombers here today. So I definitely think it's certainly better. We do share the buyer with Carlton. There aren't too many Carlton players who are particularly relevant. Same thing with Geelong. Same thing with Gold Coast, really. So there are a few teams in the buyer that we share that there aren't too many Uber premiums in there. So I do think that we have quite a good buy, actually. Beautiful. So thumbs up for the buy at this stage. So let's get into this, boys. We are starting off in defence with a man who I must admit has been a bit of a burn man for me from the past. It's Jordan Ridley, 530,300, 25 years of age. So this bloke should really be coming into his prime this year. 17 games last year for an average of almost 95. Disposal-wise, average just above 20, 4.1 contested. But we know what his strengths are. He is a magnificent user of the football. 59 kick-ins last year, played on 95% of the time. Always nice for some bonus points there. boys. 6.2% of the competition are currently running with Jordan Ridley. I think one of the reasons, apart from possibly that age and coming into his prime, is the fact is the fact that is the fuck that is the fact that even uh, there's an early uh, little slip up from DR there. He's dropped and the magic. He's dropped the too. magic, DR. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's been a bit of a fuck up for me in the past, this pick, let's be honest. But uh, with uh, Buckets McKay, McKay coming into the side, I think some people are thinking this may free up the Riddler a little bit more to play more of that super coach friendly role. But H, I don't know if he's been a burn man of yours from the past, but do you have any interest in Jordan Ridley this year? And do you think he could be viable as a starting selection in 2024? Yeah, look, that's an interesting one. And it was pretty obvious from day one when we um, went for Mackay. I think 
last season in particular, you know, Ridley, we all know how good he is with the football. You know, he's a great, great accumulator as well. So, we, you know, the thing with Ridley was, especially towards certain games last season, when he had to become accountable, we did see his scoring drop off. And if there was an injury or two, let's say, with other players or the matchup wasn't right, you would just see Ridley's scoring go down. And that's probably one of the reasons why I sort of stayed away from him. Um, in terms of this season, I'm probably not looking at starting him, but he could be someone that I might look at maybe during the season. But I'm just not sure how we're going to match up with um, Mackay and himself and whoever else we've got down back. I think maybe Reed or someone. But they will look for him, uh, DR. I'm just not sure how it's going to pan out early. That's my only um, worry with uh, Jordan Ridley. Yeah. So yeah, maybe I... on the watch list for now, maybe looking to jump on if, if everything's going well. Joey? Uh, a difference of opinion, mate, or are you with H there, not looking at him as a starting pick, but someone to definitely keep a watch of during the season to see how he goes? Yeah, 100% agree with with, with H here. Uh, a lot of his scoring comes from his ability to take a mark. And really, if if he's able to mark the footy, I mean, really in this, I think eight marks really is his floor. If he can get eight marks or above, and he did that, eight times last year and he averaged 117. So for, for him, he really needs to be able to take his marks. And if he's going to be playing accountable defense, which I think he will be, um, even by his own, you know, his own words, he's going to play a bit of defense. I think he's going to be the second defender and have another youngster who we're going to talk about later on in the video be the third. So definitely watching Rids at the moment, not starting him. Beautiful. And yeah. I'm in agreement as well, boys. Uh, definitely not looking to start him, but never say never with someone like Jordan Ridley. We've seen him go on runs in the past where he's looked like one of the best scoring defenders in the competition. So I'm not writing off the man, but uh, I think we've got some potentially better options to start with this year. The same may be said, in my opinion, about this man, Red Dog. I had to get that picture in because when I think about this bloke, that's the picture that just comes into my mind. But Iconic. Yeah, okay. it's, yeah it's, it's a bit iconic, isn't it, this pick? But 26 years of age, games 23 last year, an average of almost 91, a tick over 21 disposals or almost 22 there, 88 kick in. So it seems like Ridders and Redmond were the two that really took in most of the pie there. But for me, I think he lacks a little bit of consistency. When he's on, we've seen a couple of 140 type scores. And I think we in a three uh, week, week period in the small patch there he just went bang 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 but joey do you think he's got any sort of relevance this year or one that we can pretty much skip past mate what are your thoughts on the red dog yeah definitely skip past him obviously he got a lot of love for all of these players that we're going to talk about but you know we got to be objective here we're talking about super coach and you can't fall in love with your players uh, otherwise, we'd have a team full of Essendon players. So that, that doesn't work. Um, obviously, Red Dog plays his best when he's got that that freedom and the confidence. And you see him running up the ground and launching a goal from 55, 60 metres out. And then you see this exact celebration come out. So for me, he's someone that I'm happy to just ride the highs and lows on the field and keep him away from my super coach team. Beautiful, mate. H, uh, anything you want to add on the Red Dog, mate? Yeah, look, um, I actually saw um, the Red Dog out one night and I was so close to going up to him having a chat about Supercoach, but I just said, nah, look, you're with your missus. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm going to leave you alone. But I, I love the bloke. I think he's, um, I think he's been great for us. Um, I, th yeah. I think last season obviously was probably a little bit of a breakout year for him in terms of scoring and, you know, obviously what Joe said as well having that freedom to push up the ground and, you know, hit the scoreboard. Um, but I don't see him being super coach relevant this year as well. Then the price is quite awkward too, you know, 507. Um, he'll have his good games where, yeah, he'll probably go 95, 100, but he'll have to, yeah, do a lot, I think, in terms of being a, you know, top six, top eight defender. I, I love him, but... Yeah, super coach wise, um, 
probably not someone I would be looking at. Agreed as well. Maybe someone yeah. you super coach drafts, maybe a sneaky option that. Yeah, I think for draft, um, yeah. definitely. If you can pick him, you know, maybe like a pick four, pick five, if he falls that low in your draft leagues. Maybe uh, a yeah, luxury not. pick as well at the end of the yeah, classic yeah. season. You've got because a couple of trades to burn, and he's on he's in, he's on red hot yeah. form. He's got his tail up and about. You know, he's he's got a full head of steam, and you just want to yeah. sort of see if you can jump up a few ranks at the end of the season. And you might want to just jump on him at the end. But in terms of during the season proper, it's unforeseeable at this point. Yeah, look, he does have his spike games and and we know that if he pushes up the ground and, you know, he's not accountable for anyone, you know, he's very damaging. But I just don't see us setting up like that with, especially with Zerk Thatcher gone, I just don't see it happening. But I could be wrong. No, I'm not, I'm not Brad Scott, you know, so. (laughs) Nobody (laughs) is. Yeah, so anyway, um, interesting to see how we go. All right, beautiful boys. Next man is Kane Baldwin. So not going to go through all the stats here, but four games last year for an average of just under 50, 0.2% ownership. So I don't think too many people looking at this pick, but uh, Joey, very quickly, mate, two questions here. Firstly, do you think he's got a chance or is he currently in the best 22? And does he have any relevance whatsoever in Supercoach this year? I think he's fighting for a spot with Jaden Laverty for his spot to be in the I, I, in the back six uh, coming off the bench, I do love what I've seen from Gold Boulders this preseason. I'd actually have him ahead of Laverty, to be honest. Um, okay, and yep. and I feel like a, he's been given the tough task throughout the entire preseason of lining up on big two meter Peter. Now, Kane Baldwin is not that tall, so for him to continuously have that gig, I guess it just goes to show that how much I think the coaching group has trust in him to sort of try and challenge him and, and reach that next um, take that next step. He also went to Arizona with a bunch of the boys as well. So he's in ripping Nick. I wouldn't be surprised if he does play um, in the best 23. Uh, just for that price point, though, I don't think it's relevant. I'd definitely be a lot more comfortable starting a, a rookie at that price. H, anything you want to add on Mr. Baldwin? Yeah, I think I'm pretty much with Joe on that. Um well, I think we brought him in as a forward, I think, to start. Yep. Uh, so they've obviously changed his his role. Um, yeah, look, uh, at that price, you've got a lot of other players that you can pick and you probably have a bit more confidence in. Um, but I agree with Joe. I think he's going to be key position defender. So, and even if that's if he's best 22. Um, so... Probably something to watch in the preseason, but um, yeah, I'm not. He's probably not ahead of like Zach Williams or nah. maybe even Curtin. If you know, if you were going Good down point. that path, yeah, no. Nah. So yeah. I would, I would watch. Have a little I'm look. Have a little I'm gander. Really confident on the pick. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. We're talking about better value picks, and this is a perfect segue. Joe, you were alluding to this man before. It is young Zach Reed. Now, I knew that he was a highly rated player down there at the Dons, but when I was doing a little bit of research, I came across this. It's it's from David King. So very quickly, for anyone that may be listening without looking at the screen here, David King has named young Essendon defender Zach Reed, get this, as their most important player going into the 2024 season. Again, no pressure, no pressure. Opinion. No pressure whatsoever to the young man who's played, what, seven or eight career games, I think it was. But the key defender was selected with pick 10 in the 2020 National Draft, but has only played, there you go, eight career games with significant injury setbacks. However, he's been a regular at Bombers preseason training, and King believes the combination of Reed and free agency recruit Ben Buckets Mackay could transform Essendon's defensive half. I agree. Joey. You I said agree wholeheartedly about this young man. You were, we were having a quick chat pre-podcast. Tell us why you're so excited, not only from a super coach point of view, but from a Bombers fan's point of view about this young man, Zach Reed. Because we had those three picks. There's three top 10 draft picks where we went with Archie Perkins, Nick Cox, and this young man, Zach Reed. And we've known... All Essendon supporters have known from that day 
that this guy was the most exciting out of the three of them. And he's the one that we've seen the least of. And nothing has changed my mind. All of the reports, is there's always been a lot of enthusiasm and excitement around what this kid can accomplish being his height. He's had some growing pains and stress fractures in his back as he's continued to grow. He's now 205 centimeters plus. So his key wow. position size, but his ability to take tuck the ball under his arm, go for a run, a bounce, and kick on both feet uh, equally as well has been truly it's been it's something special. And I know Todd Goldstein, he's come across to the side and in a recent interview just yesterday uh, at Media Day, he said that the one player who's excited him the most out of everyone on the list was Zach Reid this preseason because this guy is the unicorn. I know Nick Cox was called the unicorn, but <laughs> this guy is the true, this guy is Pegasus. Not just a unicorn. <laughs> he is a mythical creature upgrade, beyond the yeah. unicorn. Uh, I can't wait for him to play. Oh, well, very, very exciting, mate. You've absolutely got me on board. H, do you share the, share the same excitement and confidence as big man Joey? Yeah, 100%. I'm um, I'm looking forward. I'm so excited to see him this year, play this year. Um, there's so much hype about the, about the young man, but... What was this going to say? Like, obviously, we've got in the, in the draft, we had Reed. We also had Harry Jones, Nick Cox. But Zach Reed is probably one player that the club has been really keen on, you know, developing. And obviously, when Zerk Thatcher left support, that was pretty much the replacement. I think they knew that as well. So, okay, um, yeah. I'm... Yeah. Um, I'm so excited to see what he brings, but he's been in absolute ripping condition preseason. And the reports coming out of the club is that, you know, they are wrapped with him. So he's 100% in my team at the moment. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, he's been doing there's everything. no way. I mean, yeah. un unless yeah. something dr drastic happens, an injury or something, but he will be locked in at probably D7 or D8. Who knows? Right. Maybe D5. <laughs> that, well, that, that was going to be my next very quick question before we move on to the to the midfielders. Do you think he's a realistic on field option at a, let's just say D six, or are you guys much keener to sort of push him to that D seven D eight if possible? Joey, what do you feel about that, mate? In relevance to on field, I think he's going to he's going to play third tall. I think it's going to be yeah. Mackay playing on the number one. It will be Ridley playing on number two, and I think Zach Reed is going to play on the third. Um, and using his size and mobility, I can see him taking a few intercept marks. So uh, I wouldn't honestly reckon if you are looking to go light on in defense and looking to really bolster up your, your midfield because you want to pay up for a lot of these gun mids, then I definitely think it's certainly worthwhile having a Zach Reed in on the field. Uh, we've got we've got Hawthorne right off the bat in round one, and I can see Zach Reed just intercepting left, right, and center uh, in round one, to be honest. Oh, I'm getting excited, H. Would you be comfortable having this bloke on field come round one? Well, yeah. Look, it depends. You've, 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 you know, it depends how you set up. So, you know, some will be going with Gibbicus, some will be going with, um, you know, Marty Hall or you know, Caulfield types. Yeah. Um, I heard that Toby Pink was really good today in the um intra club for Ooh, North. So there's a lot of blokes running around there. At, you know, in that position, even you know, Curtin as well. So. Yeah, um, it just yep. it just depends, like, hey, where where you want to go, and you know, if, if you want to start him on the field, I can see him going seventy five eighty on a good good game. Um, so yeah, look again, watch the preseason. If you're confident, go ahead. But um, he's definitely in for me. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, on field, bench, whatever you want to do. Only twenty percent ownership at the moment, so. Uh, from what I've just heard from these two boys, not high enough at the moment. Talking about the big dogs, let's get into the midfield legends. So we are going to open up with this man. It's going to be obvious. It is Zachary Merritt, 28 years of age, 22 games last year, 2023 average, 116.3. Phenomenal year from Zach Merritt. Close to 30 touches just under there, almost 10 contested, five and a half tackles. Very nice CBA rate there of 74%. Almost 10% of coaches are looking to start this man. But boys, I did mention this pre-podcast. I forgot to put it on the slide. I've actually messaged this to myself here. But it for me, it really does seem like with Zach Merritt, 
you can get him at a friendly price each year. Now, through injury, through a little bit of bad form, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to very quickly go through some numbers here. So in 2020, I'm going to start from 2020 to 2023. In 2020, his price came down to 524,000, three-week run, 78, 68, and then 96. In 2021, came down to 540 with a run of 64 and then 117, 119. But really that 64 that sent his price into a little bit of free fall there. In 2022, three-week run, 99, 108, and then a 57. That got him down to 520K. And then last year, came down to 560, which is the highest so far. So it is trending in the right way, but that was through a run of 96, uh, sorry, 91, 106, and then 95. So it just seems to me, looking back at the history with his scoring and with his price fluctuations, that he can tend to dip with almost a three-week period of some average form, even just the one sort of low type game. So H, are you interested at all in starting with Zach Merritt? Or do you think he's more of an upgrade option? Because I think it's pretty obvious that most coaches would love to have this guy in their team, but we're talking about starting picks now. Yeah. What do you think about him in your initial side going into this year, mate? Yeah, look, uh, you're pretty spot on with um, what you've said there, uh, DR. Look, you know, we all know how good he is and we all know how damaging he is. And he's, when he's on, you know, he can go 150, 160. And we've seen it. We've seen it in the last, especially, you know, last over the last couple of seasons. As a starting pick, though, um, I've never really started with Zach Merritt, to be honest. Um, I've always sort of brought him in at the right time. And I think last year we got it right when he went 170 yep. against Richmond. And that was just a mu I mean, we all called it, you know. Bring him in. I think Janeth even put the captaincy on him. I mean, ridiculous. Me you know? too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. Great minds. Great minds. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that was that's what you do with um, I think that's how you play the Zach Merritt sort of card. You sort of look at his look at our fixture. Will he get tagged? We know he can get tagged and does sort mm. of struggle a little bit with tags. Um but for me, he's obviously going to come in. It's just if he can get to 575, 65 around there, uh, and when our fixture opens up a little bit, he's in. So I, I would be looking at it as a, yeah, I would be looking at him as a um, trading. Beautiful. Joey, what are your and thoughts on Zeret? I agree 100%. And I can tell you when I'm going to try and get him in, and that's at round <laughs> seven onwards. So round All seven... Beautiful. Okay. Here's my aim. When our fixture opens up, it opens Zach up, Merritt, yeah. you got to come to my side that then and there, my boy. I love I you love to it. bits. I'm not going <laughs> to start you. You're going to be a bit cheaper come round seven. Plus the fixture will open up. That's yeah. that's my that's my obviously my forecast. Obviously plans can muck up as we know we've discussed on our channel when you featured in our beginner video dr. But round seven is hopefully when Zach Merritt will be on my side. Beautiful. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I had the same plan. I think you just mentioned age before. He was coming up to a really nice run last year. It sort of dipped down. And it's like, beautiful. You just rub the hands together and he went on a mad <laughs> run. It was so good. So that's, yeah, that's why I actually look back at the history with Eric, because as you said, it's like, I don't start him, but it seems like he always comes into my side. It, it seems like there's yeah. always the ideal time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think we're all agree uh, in agreement there. Ripping player. We want him in our sides at some stage just not necessarily right at the start. The next bloke really, really <laughs> intrigues me. And it's mm -hmm. Darcy Parrish. When I think about this bloke, I just think back to Anzac Day, as I think many people do. But 26 years old, again, coming right into his prime. The 18 games last year. I'm going to skip the average for a sec. 30.8 disposals, almost half of those contested with a CBA rate of 81%. What's going on here? We look at the average, it's 108.1. Now, I'm a little bit unsure what's going on here, boys. If you look at the raw numbers, you'd be thinking an average would be pushing more towards Bonte type numbers. Maybe not that high, but a lot more than the 108. Surely 110, 115 plus. Joey, can you tell us what's going on with Darcy Parrish? Is it the fact that he's got some injury affected games that contribute to that lower type average? What's the yeah. go with, with Darcy Parrish as a super coach selection, mate? His last couple of seasons have been injury interrupted. His pre-seasons haven't been 
perfect. There's been always some niggles in the last couple of seasons. Uh, plus, Essendon as a stoppage side are uh, bottom two for number of stoppages in the competition. So Essendon have, it's it's widely documented that we really struggle with holding up opposition transition from our back 50 to their forward 50. And that's something that we've really hoped that various coaches have been able to address, but unfortunately, it hasn't been the case. And as a result, the games really tend to be very open when we play. And that would normally be of great detriment, for example, for someone who is a contested player like Darcy Parrish. And that, to me, just screams that there is so much upside. If we can fix up as a, as a side, if we can fix up our team defense and get some more stoppages going up, he is by far and, our way, far and away our best contested ball winner. And he's been flying in this preseason. Yep. He's also had some work done on his low disposal efficiency which has also sort of limited his scoring he's really when he went at 69 that a nice 69 percent disposal efficiency last year which obviously um would hold him back from those bond numbers yeah so yep. He's, he's had a lot of work this preseason working with david rath who's come across to the side as an extra coach and he has it's been very noticeable the imp the improvement in his disposal efficiency so Personally, he's in my he's in my side. I actually have him on on my um in in my team. Wow, I I had no idea because we talk a little <laughs> bit, mate. You know, with, with the DMs and this over here, you, you pulled this one on me. I told you pre podcast, and you didn't even tell us pre podcast either. You sneaky bugger! You've just dropped it on me now. This bomb. I told you I was really interested because, and and that's why I love having you on, Joey. Because not only is it that the player himself. It's the game, it's a game style. Yeah. And this is why I love having you supporters on because these are the intricate things that you know. So you're looking past him as simply a player, but what's the team actually doing? And where, where's the upside in this pick? So if we look at the price between him, him and Zero, you're saving 50 odd K there. I've got there with a question mark tag target. Now, for me, when you've got someone like Zeret in the side, and we've talked about there maybe potentially a bit of a lack of damage with someone like a parish pick, the great thing is that the tag usually would go to Zeret, which frees this bloke up even more to do a little bit of damage. Joey, absolutely love it, mate. H, what are your thoughts on Darcy Parrish, mate? Look, um, as Jay said, um, you know, he had a bit of interrupted sort of year last year uh, with a few niggles and, you know, his disposal was down uh, in terms of efficiency. Um, but from what I've heard this preseason through certain people at the club, he is flying at training. Yep. And someone, Ooh, I'm, not gonna name, <laughs> I'm not going to name him because he does watch this show. Um He's predicted that he's going to win the Brownlow medal. I know that's crazy, but he's actually reckons he's a Brownlow medal favorite. Yeah, that's how good he's been training. Um, I love Darcy Tell Parrish. Him why. A year before. Tell him why. Tell him why, Harry. What? Why is he? Why is he so likely to win the Brownlow? Please. Well, he's been killing it at preseason. So, like, as they've they've been working on his disposal and his tag, and obviously his uh, ability to break tags. So, not just that his clearance work has improved, and also now that we've got, um, a, you know, um, Dersma and Gresham, and you know Hobbs until he sort of hurt his shoulder, and he should be all right round one. But we're basically working around a plan to free up these free up guys like Parrish and Merritt and bring his other guys in. Um, so our game plan at the moment is all around set of field, Parrish, Merritt. We're really trying to improve that midfield. Um, that's been our problem. Like Everyone knows that. Uh, we know it as supporters that our midfield hasn't been great over the last couple of seasons. But um, he has been putting in a lot of work in the preseason, and don't be surprised if he comes out flying. Just I'm, I'm being, I'm, and he could be my side. <laughs> Where did you do it to me? Where and, did you come from? Oh, Joey. there's more. Dr. There's more. But wait, 
there's more. But the, he it, has it, improved it, his tank to a point where he's now resting forward rather than going to the bench. He had like 40-odd disposals and kicked three goals in our last intra-club. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, crazy stuff. I didn't know that, uh, um, Joe. I didn't know that he was resting forward, but that's um, interesting. Yeah, 40 touches. He yeah. well. had like 40 touches, three goals. One of them he kicked from the midfield, to be fair. But yeah, yeah he's uh, he's resting forward as well. So Because as you say, we're trying to get more players going through there. It could be yeah. a Perkins going through there every now and then or a Coldwell. Darcy Parrish, man, he, he really could win the Brown. And with Goldie tapping it to him? Just don't be surprised if you see a massive start to the season from Darcy Parrish. He'll like, price it will you not surprise quick. me at all. Yeah, he'll this price, he'll, he'll he'll price people there. out quick. And he's at a good price too. So if you look at his price, 604, you're going to compare him to some of the other boys like, you know, Track or, you know, Laird. I mean, like even Sarong and Green, you know, they're all sort of 30, 40K more. You know, he could work if you need to bring in, you know, if you need to bring in that more expensive rookie in your forward line. I'm just saying, yeah. just sort of, sort of throwing it out there. Um, but I got my eye on him. I'm, I'm been really impressed with this preseason. Yeah. And yeah, Brownlow favourite. Well, <laughs> as I said, I'm a bit knocked off my chair here with the interest. I thought we'd have maybe just a quick, yeah, look, great player sort of thing, but not damaging enough, rah, rah, rah. And then you folks have brought out the sales pitch to me. Like, I'll tell you what, there is, after hearing that, there is so much to like. There is so much to like. He's on my radar now. He is really on my radar, and you're right. You are getting a bit of a discount on some of those other selections. Boys, unexpected, but this is why I had I got you two on, on the potty this week. All right, absolute gold. Love it, blokes. All right, now, we almost need a drum roll, I think, here, because <laughs> <laughs> this bloke, we are all over the three yeah. of us. I know for a fact, right? Unless you, you've got some different information, I'm not too sure, right? So I'm really going to let you guys uh, take this away. But Nick Martin, I put out a tweet about a month ago saying locked for M5. He's now moved down to M6 for me. I've gone a little bit heavier in the midfield myself at this stage, and, and things may change. But for me, there is so much to like about this selection. Now, I, I, I'll give you my word on this, people. I'll give you my word on this because I speak to H and you know, Joey as well. Uh, yeah, a lot of the time during the year. But back in, I reckon it was last year in 2023, this was, I'll speak with H. And last year, he was all over Errol Gould. And this is before the massive matches. This is before no one was talking about him, right? And yep. he said to me, I swear to you this year, you go, I said, who's, who's your new Errol? And he goes, Nick Martin. Now, no offence to H, I had a little bit of, not a giggle or a laugh. I thought, oh, geez, H is, is, is reaching for one this year. But all of a sudden, you see that 4% ownership, I reckon that will start to rise in the coming weeks and for very good reasons. So I know we're all massively into this guy. H, we'll start with you because, as I said, he was your new Errol coming into this season. Tell us why you are so big personally on starting Nick Martin in 2024. Yeah, so um, I did, as you said, um, did say he was going to be, oh, I know it was a big call, but I did say he was going to be the Errol Goulden of, you know, 2023. And I had some really good information coming from the club in January that we're actually looking to play him off half back. Um, and, you know, that we... we we as Essendon supporters know, we all remember the first game that he played, how impressive he was, you know, who is this kid, you know? He got <laughs> <Look> <laughs> There's literally... a new Martin in town. I still remember the commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like we I literally got him. In here. He got him for basically nothing, I think, you know, I mean, and he's been fantastic, you know. He's a, he's a, his disposal's great too, you know, and he can get the footy. I just think it all makes sense too because we we obviously brought in um, Gresham and Dersma. Obviously, they can play on wings. They can you know come in into the you know half forward midfield. And all preseason, we've been using Nick Martin 
as our defensive uh, step step out of defense, if we could say that. So not being accountable, not playing any lockdown roles. He's basically in that back six. Um, we'll be looking for him and we want the footy in his hands. And um, at that price, 492, um, he has the scope to improve that average to about 101, 102, I, I, I reckon. And even the best thing about this pick is that he's going to get defensive mid status come round yes. seven. And that's when it opens up. So for me, he's in at the moment. He's in at M6. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this. I think we're obviously set up, we're setting up for him. And I mean, Joe's got any more information about it, uh, about, you know, about his role or anything. Um, it'd be great to know, but from what I'm uh, been hearing from the club, you know, he's definitely um, got, we definitely want the footy in, in his hands. Yeah. Joey, yeah. your thoughts, my friend, because you were getting <laughs> excited just as H was talking, then you could see the look in your face. You get a little bit toey there when we're talking about Nick Martin, oh. Joey. So uh, yeah. tell us why you're so into him as a selection this year, buddy. Anyone out there, you got to find yourself a woman who looks at you the same way I look at Nick Martin. You just have to do it. Like, if you can, if, if you can do that, you, you've you've won life. Forget super coach. You've won life. I, the words can't describe how much I love this kid. Um, and he, we got him from right under West Coast's nose out in Subiaco for for, for free. It's it's ridiculous. Oh. Thank you, West Coast, for being so incompetent. But talking about <laughs> Nick Martin, this this guy is anything but incompetent. And I know H said that he's heard things from the club, but what makes it even more more reliable is that the club itself is doing everything it can to not get word out of his role. Yeah. Any any sort of public information, any sort of interview that takes place, any sort of word coming out of the club in, a, in an official capacity is that he's playing the same role. But whenever you talk to people who are in the know, and people who actually interview this, the players specifically, like I'm a subscriber of the Lunchtime Catch Up podcast. They do. They're they're a diehard Essendon couple, um, Grant and Scooter, and they went to the club for media day and they interviewed uh, Big Ben Mackay and they asked Mackay what's it been like training with the club ever since he's come across, and he said that it's been stable and consistent training with the same people throughout his entire preseason. And he listed Nick Martin as the first player that he's been training in defense with. <laughs> Nick, all of the intra clubs, he's taken kickouts, he's sharing them with Mason Redmond. These two seem to be going to be the prime movers out of the back line. Uh, he is going to play, it looks like, that, that Nick Dacos esque role where he starts in the back line and he has the license to move up the ground and hit the scoreboard, which we know that he can. Again, H mentioned it. His pre his his first game, he had twenty seven disposals and five goals against Geelong. Like the guy knows how to find the big oh, sticks. He's a good yeah. size, at one ninety two centimeters, so he can take an intercept mark as well if he needs to. Good if the ball's size, in his yeah. good size, incredible tank. You need a great tank to be one of the best wingers in the comp. So he's just got all of the facilities to really dominate and flourish. Plus, he's a, he's a big accumulator. He's a pig. He's not like Ridley. He's not like Redmond, who are happy to dispose of the ball. This guy will track the ball. He will run. He will do some one-twos. He will demand the ball back. So I can see this guy. Uh, I think H is being a bit conservative with the 100. I can see him going 105 to 110 even. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> and that's I, – I, well, I've had a few questions because I've, I've obviously put out there that I'm starting Martin. You know, why Martin over Crouch? And my simple response to that is – that I view Martin as a keeper, not a midfield yep. keeper, but a defensive keeper. Whereas Crouch, I think best case scenario you're looking at is maybe an M8. If that's what you want, great. I think there's a bit of value if you're looking for a different sort of move, stepping tone, stone type stuff before buys, go for it. But that is the big difference for me. He's currently a midfielder, but he will be playing as a defender. He's getting DPP. We'll be able to slide him back. And you think if someone like Hayden Young, I think all of us are starting him as well. He's going to get the DPP. What a nice little link that you've got there. Ultimately, we want him starting down back, Nick Martin, to open up that slot in our midfields. 
And there'll be many, many ways to make that happen. It could be a curtain coming up, for example. So massive on Nick Martin. I think he's in for a big year, boys. And uh, as Essendon supporters, what a joy it's going to be. Now, actually, before we get to Goldie, I, I did a bit of a stuff up. As most of us know, particularly us living down here in Victoria, I don't know what the other states like, but we lost power. I lost Wi-Fi, all the rest. And I was completing these slides there, and I was going to insert the Setter Goat and Ben Hobbs, but the charger went out, computer went off, and I didn't press Control S. But I did want to mention Setter Goat uh, just to start off with, because my man Joey, I've been dedicated a symbol in the stock market videos for my man Joey, who Your I man Joey. Love, as you know, for Mr. Setter Goat, because he was all over him, and what a start he had. People were bringing him in. But my man, Joey, just on the ball with that. So very quickly, Joey, uh, and I might then go to you, H, for a different player, one more player that I forgot to put on. But, Joey, very quickly, any relevance this year, your boy, the set of goat, mate, or uh, one that we can maybe skip past in 2024? Set of goats will do better this year than he did last year. He okay. is He is flying. He is dominating. He is going to be a mainstay in CBA. He's, he is in the first rotation for center bounce attendances over the preseason. His 1% work and pressure work and, and tackling, the defensive side of the game has, has been tremendous in this in this preseason. He was he actually moved from the A team to the B team in the intra club to balance it up because the A team was dominating against the B okay. team. They That's put him on the yeah. B team to quell the dominance of the A-team. And he actually went head-to-head -head with the A-team by himself with just how great his defensive efforts were. He's, he's, if people are looking at wines, stuff Ollie wines, <laughs> pick Will Setterfield, he will give you at least 10 points more than, than wines. Wow, that's and that's a big call early in the season. I love it, Joe. I absolutely love it. Uh, H... What do you think, very quickly, before we get to another bloke, the setter goat, fan of the man? Oh, look, he's – I just love the name. Like, I swear. <laughs> 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 like, I've, it's just a great name. Like, we had so much fun last year with it. I know I know, it was a really popular pick um, early on and, you know, it didn't quite work out towards, you know, middle of the season and whatever. But, I mean, look, he's really important for our structure. Um, and like Joe said, you know, like he does a lot of that defensive work, um, but he has improved. I mean, his his fitness has improved a lot over the preseason. They've they've really mentioned that he's worked hard on his on his um on his training and on his uh, tank. Um, that's sort of been something that's been a little bit of a concern with him over the past few seasons, even before he joined us. But um, yeah, he's another one. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't start him personally. Um, but look, you know, I mean, Joe, I know Joe loves him, and you know, I mean, could the you bits. put him in? Could you put him in if you were going a wines or a crouch? Uh, I don't know. Like, he's another one to watch. I think zero point three percent. If you're looking for a pod move, and anyone that is interested, price is right on four hundred and seventy-five k. So it seems like there's a few options. At just above that price. So certainly an option. And the other bloke I did forget, uh, H, was Benny Hobbs. Now, I've heard that he's recently done himself a bit of a doozy. Is it a shoulder, mate? Can you tell us much about what's happening with Benny? Yeah, he's hurt his shoulder. I don't think it's serious. Um, I think it's probably two or three weeks. Um, before that, though, he was best on ground in our intra-club game. Absolutely dominated. Wow. Um not sure if it was in the B team, um, but look, he's we're obviously taking a step forward with him this year. Um, and again, he falls into that mix with, um, you know, Merritt and Parrish and a few of those other boys. So before the shoulder injury, he was on fire at training. Um, not sure I would start him. A uh, bit of a hard one, but look... As an Essendon, look, as a football supporter, as as an Essendon supporter, um, you know, I, I love what I'm seeing with Ben Hobbs. I just hope he can get over the uh, 
little shoulder issue he's got. But yeah, maybe mid season. See see, <laughs> see how we go. I don't know. Here we what go. Well, go? well, he is four hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred. It is an awkward yeah. price, Joey. Awkward Anything price, you can yeah. add on on Benny Hobbs, mate? Yeah, I just I just don't think Ben Hobbs is going to be getting the bulk CBAs that. Um, I don't think he's going to get as many CBAs as the Parish, for example. I think Parish is a lock for around 80%. 80%. Uh, I think Setterfield's going to be also eating into quite a few of those CBAs. I, I can see Hobbs, when he's fit and healthy, maybe getting 40%, 40 to 50 perhaps. Uh, and, he, and a bit of it will be involving playing a bit of half forward as well. So for me, not, not, a, not a super coach pick for me, especially not to start with. Yeah. Beautiful, boys. Excellent. Well, very quickly, I don't think we're going to spend a heap of time here with Toddy Goldstein in the ruck, but I did want to just put a ruck option out there. Did I put the right one? I'm not too sure, but 533,400. What a war horse he is. Uh, us boys have played super coach for a fair while. He was a bit of a mainstay in my ruck line for a few years there. Loved Goldie as a selection, but obviously 35 years of age now. His best years are behind him. Is he in for a mentor type role? Is he the lock for the best 22 ruck? Joey, very quickly, mate, what do you think about Todd Goldstein this year? I definitely think he's not playing just to be a mentor. I definitely think Brad Scott moved him across to play him. Uh, I'm not sure he thinks that um, young Nick Bryan is ready to fully shoulder the rigors of a full season, him and yep. Draper. I think he's going to be there to play with Draper, uh, keep allowing young Nick Bryan to, to develop in the VFL to continue to dominate there and make sure he comes on well. I don't think Goldie's going to play the whole season. I wouldn't be surprised if he's managed here and there, given his age. Um, but I wouldn't be selecting him as a super coach option, not with the incredible value that we have. I mean, I mean, you got Grundy for 50k cheaper. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's just a no-brainer. Really, isn't it, mate, at the end of the day, H? Anything you want to add on Toddy Goldstein, mate? Yeah, I, look, I wouldn't be starting. Um, wouldn't be starting him this year. I, I mean, look, I wouldn't even wouldn't even think of bringing him in. Mm. Um, I know it might sound a bit harsh, but you know, he's just for me, he's not super coach uh, relevant, especially in the ruck. Like you said, we've got we've got options. We've got Grundy at a discount price. We've got Gorn. Um, you know, Marshall and, you know, Tim English. So, look, he, for, for the club, though, for for an assistant and supporter, yeah, it'll be, it's good to have him in. Yep. He'll, he'll, like Joe said, he'll be teaching Nick Bryan and um, obviously giving Draper a chop out with, with the ruck work. But, yeah, I think his days as a super coach uh, pick are done. Yeah, agree with you, mate. And so yeah. does the rest of the competition, 0.3%, and I think for good reason. All right, into the forward line now. We've got a few options here. They're all a little bit awkwardly priced, but we'll yeah. start off with Kyle Langford, 27 years of age. And again, we've talked about a few blokes, you know, your Redmond, your Ridley types, your Parrish, coming into really that prime age, aren't they, where they should be playing their best football. 23 games last year, average just below 80. Really impressive, 2.2 goals on average per game. So a bloke that can certainly hit the scoreboard. There seems to be those games where he just tends to pop up time after time. I really yeah. rate him as a player. I think he's a really fantastic player, Kyle Langford. I think I brought him into my team maybe two years ago now in the forward line as a bit of a pot option that didn't quite work for me. But uh, Joey, do you think Kyle Langford has any relevance whatsoever, particularly this year with our weak forward lines? Or do you think that we skip blokes like your Langford and maybe go for those folks that are under your 300k mark mate well i, I personally think we skip players at, at you know guys like carl langford who are going to be playing second key uh for us definitely going to be two meter peter who's the first primary target and langers will obviously be the second major target there in the forward line i'll, I'll obviously love langers and respect him so much and for him to have scored so much um last year even starting in defense in round one and we weren't even he, he didn't even train in the forward line last season because wow. i think brad squat was intending him to to play in the in the back line so for yeah. him to we, we've always known that this guy is incredibly talented and can play a bunch of different positions but he's had a lot of troubles keeping himself fit 
and firing on the park. So for him to to play a full season last year, I think that was the first time of his career to play all games. Uh, and we saw how important he was for us. I just don't want to pick key forwards, really. I know he's not a key forward size, um, and he kicked a lot of goals. So I won't say don't pick him, because if you, especially if there are any people out there who genuinely believe the Bombers are primed for a jump up the ladder this year, then obviously that would mean a lot of goals being kicked from Langers. So if you think a lot of goals is coming from him because Bombers are rising, then I won't say don't pick him. But for me, I'll, I'll go elsewhere. Beautiful, mate. H, anything to add on Langers? Yeah, look, I'm I'm really sort of unsure where... I'm really sort of unsure how he's going to fit in with um, two-meter Peter and if he is even going to play predominantly forward this year. So I think last season he was obviously the most damaging forward player uh, when it came to goals per disposal. So... You know, he, like you said, Dio, he'd always pop up and kick two, could kick three. Um, I wouldn't be picking him in super coach, but if I was playing draft, he could be someone that I could have as an option. But yeah, um, like it, mate. Not for super coach this year. Bit of a sneaky draft pick. Always good for those people playing draft. We often forget about the draft side of super coach when we're doing these next bloke is jade gresham so obviously talented type player came across from the saint is forward look at that age again it's been common with some of these players 26 years of age 23 games last year i must admit when i looked at that average i thought that's a little bit low this bloke's got the potential to surely go your 85 plus doesn't he but Maybe it just wasn't his year last year at the Saners. 17.6 disposals, CBA rate of just over 25%. I didn't know where that would be at before I did a bit of research. I don't know what his chances of making impact are this year in the super coach sense, but at the awkward price, Joey, what do you think about the Jade Gresham selection? You sort of alluded before to the fact that you're not really looking at players around this price. Does he interest you whatsoever or a name that we can pretty much just skip past, you think, in 2024, buddy? The thing is that Jade Gresham, he's he's different to a Langford because Gresham will, I think, run through the midfield a little bit. I think Gresham is going... I think what Gresham brings to the Bombers that at his best he showed at St Kilda was his transition run, being able to go up into the midfield and then bust his butt back into the forward line to present as an option. And that's something that we haven't had at the Bombers. We've had players like Snelling uh, and, you know, no disrespect to Snelling. He, I think he definitely got the best that he could out of himself. But Absolutely, yeah, yeah. He's not a top 10 pick caliber player like a Jade Gresham is, for example. And I think a lot of what's held Gresham back with his scoring has been his poor disposal efficiency as well. Um He's been quite a bit of a butcher at the Saints. I know. I think he's averaged about 60% disposal efficiency for his career, oh, okay. yeah. um, which is pretty bad. But on the yeah, flip side, is, yeah. he's averaged about 20 disposals and a goal for his for his career as well. So when you just look at it on that, he's got some positives and negatives. And from reports, he's been one of our best, actually, when it comes to the preseason. He's been doing really well in all of the in intra-clubs that we've had. Um, and he's regularly in the top five performers. So to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a year where we see Gresham actually raise that average up. He's going to be given a lot of responsibility, I think, to, and he will definitely play every week, um, barring injury as well. So for me, he's a watch. It is a really awkward of a price. If he was a bit cheaper, then I'd be a lot more willing to jump on. But yeah, for now, I'm just yeah. continuing to watch him. I very much agree with that. That price, it's just 373 you're getting close to 300, then I'm really, really listening. Yeah. H, uh, any thoughts on Jay Gresham, mate? Yeah, look, I think that price, 373 straight forward as well. So there's no sort of yeah. ball swing. Yeah. Look, the price is awkward. Um, I personally wouldn't be going there. Um, we know that last season, we, know, we all know last year at St Kilda, it, he didn't have a great season, but that doesn't say that he's not a good player. Obviously, right. we picked yeah. him for we, we've we went for him very early in the trade period, and 
like I think Brad Scott knew that we needed some of this run and he's got the fitness and we all know that he's, if he improves his efficiency, um, he'll, you know, he'll be great for us in terms of, you know, getting to the midfield, you know, running down back, also playing in other positions as well. But as a super coach pick, I, it's just a very awkward price. It's just that sort of, you know, mid price. Do you take a gamble with it? I, I personally can't see him in my team. Um, but yeah, look, there's one percent that believe he's he's good enough. So yeah, personally though, um, I wouldn't. I'm not looking at him personally. Beautiful boys. All right, the next man here. No, no, everybody. <laughs> if you're looking at the screen right now, and you're thinking it's my man Spills, it's actually not. This is Elijah Sardis. Now, <laughs> here's Spills' his twin I've got there. I think, uh, and. No, I'm not going to spoil Spills' news, but he can't be here for a very, very important reason tonight. May have had something to do, as Joe was saying, with getting his guns out the other day and uh, that, that nice long kick for goal on Instagram that we put up. But uh, that is another story for another day. But Elijah Sardis, I do know that Spills was legitimately taking a really close look at this bloke because, as it mentions there, he's a really high-end talent who's having a great preseason. Only the four games last year for an average of 55. 16 a bit disposals there on average, 4.3 contested, had a 16% CBA rate, and currently 9% of coaches are running with this man in their side, which I was a little bit surprised about. I thought, geez, that is a little bit high for what I thought anyway. But Joey, uh, what will his role be in 2024, do you think, mate? And more importantly for me, can he increase that CBA rate? I've got from 20 plus, you know, plus there, but... Could he get up to that 30 mark, do you think, mate, to possibly make him a little bit more relevant? What are your thoughts on Mr. Sartis? I personally don't think he'll get to 30% CBAs. Uh, I think what he's been doing in the preseason, it looks like we're earmarking him to play on the wing uh, to use his line-breaking ability. That's from what I can tell. He's put in a lot of work in the preseason. He went to Arizona with the boys. So his body has certainly transformed. Uh, into that of a professional athlete. A lot of these young players, when they have their first or second pre-seasons, they're, they're, they, they're, they're developing bodies really mature uh, and look really chiseled and things like that. So he certainly has improved physically, but he's also had to do quite a bit of work in the off-season. Similar to a parish, he's also been getting a lot of work done with his disposal, uh, especially with his kick. So he's kicking, it's, he's getting a whole new kicking routine, a whole new kicking motion, uh, sort of redeveloped during this preseason, which meant that he was going to have, it was going to take some time for it to really gel and become second nature to him. So he is still missing the occasional kicks here and there. It's, it's definitely been improving over the preseason. So I can't see him lining up for a lot of CBAs. I think if he plays, he's going to be more of a winger. Okay, beautiful, mate. H, any other thoughts on Elijah? Yeah, look, um, I've, I agree with what Joe's just said there. Um, I can't see him playing bulk midfield minutes. Um, obviously, look, you know, he had a very, he had an injury, injury interrupted season and he only played the four games last year towards the end. Um, that price though of 245000 um, is interesting too because you've got a a lot of boys or a lot of players in that price range. You know, you got your Jordan. True. Heap, isn't there? Yeah. You've got your man, Nat, Nat Fife. Um, <laughs> oh, my um, man. Oh, my you know, man. Know about that. You know, there's my a couple man. of boys running around that price range. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. those guys, James Harms, or Oven, Billings maybe, but I think they're ahead of Tatsis at the moment as a starting pick, unfortunately. I mean, look, it, you know, Oh, I, I just think he's a little bit behind those other guys at the moment. Yep. Fair enough. Say, yeah. I, I yeah. saw that pick of Spills. Mate, he's in ripping condition, Spills. I'll tell you right now. Oh, <laughs> mate, isn't he? And isn't let me tell you, he was not afraid to take that shirt off as soon as he's we got there. Absolutely ripping Nick. Oh, it's like, geez, it's hot. You know, you get, uh, you get the rig out. Right? <laughs> Yeah, it's hot because you're in here, Spills. Get out. 
I get a bit flustered at times with a great man as well. But uh, yeah. Spilsy, we're, we're saying at this stage, mate, that there's probably some better options than your look like. The last bloke we are going to finish with, lads, is this man, Nate Caddy. So selected with pick number 10 in last year's draft, 18 years old. And again, I was a little bit surprised to see this ownership of 20%. Yeah. H, my main issue with this selection, when we're paying 166, 166K, is the fact that I don't think personally his role is going to be necessarily super coach friendly. Yeah. Do you agree with that, mate? And yeah, I, I do. Aside from yeah. that, is he in the best 22? Well, that's the other thing. You know, we've got Durham. We've got some other boys in there. We've also got Kelly. You know, um, I know they don't play that his position, obviously, but it's how the team balances. Um, he's got a, you know, that he's... He, we, we brought him in. We specifically picked him for a reason, obviously, you know, in the draft. So, um, you know, is he a super coach relevant pick? I don't think he is. I'm really shocked to see 20%. Oh, that's mm. cruel. That's that's a huge amount of – um, that's a huge ownership. It's like the Zane Dersma one, isn't it? Um, you know, 44. Oh, yeah, he's another one. Yeah. You know, I know it's yeah. a North player, but – Yeah. I'm not – I just don't think he's got the super coach, um, super coach pick this year in terms of getting you these uh, 75, 80s. He'll have a lot of low scores as well. Yep. You know, I, I feel like he'll have a lot of low scores um, as well as some okay ones. But I don't know what you guys think. I just don't think he's super coach relevant. I'm with you, Joey. Do you have any interest in Nate Caddy, mate? I've got a lot of interest in Nate Caddy, the man, the, the young man as, as a player. Yeah. The man, but not the pick. <laughs> but not, not, not the pick. I agree. Uh, he, as, as H said, we definitely targeted this guy. I think with a long-term goal that this guy is going to be our Jake Stringer replacement, um, he has that capacity mm -hmm. to take over a game with that X factor forward whilst also having some burst minutes in some CBAs. So he, we definitely rate the kid incredibly high and he has had a ripping preseason. The thing with him is he is only 18 and key position players take a bit of time to fill, to fill out. Yeah. And this guy only knows one pace and that is full tilt. He doesn't take a step back to anybody. And that is a good thing. But at the same time, it's also hard to temper him because his body's not ready to do that with fully grown men who have been in the system for so long. I can, I love the endeavor. I love the drive. Uh, I love everything about that, but he's had a bit of a fall going for another massive screamer in the last intra club. He's fallen on his back and he's yeah. now going to be with the, he's now in the rehab group. Nothing oh, serious. No, okay. Nothing serious according to the club, Yeah. but the club's going to have to hold him back from himself. Playing in that style in the in the lower leagues before he's reaching AFL level has held him in great stead, but he has to fill out his body before he can continue to do that at senior level. I wouldn't really be putting him in my side almost at all this year unless we're up against a really good run where we've got some really weak opposition like a West Coast, for example, um, yeah. because when we're up and about, he's going to get heaps of supply and he's a great drawer of the football. But outside of that, I wouldn't really have him in my side. 20% is way too much. Beautiful, yeah. boys. Absolutely elite analysis. And that now takes us to the end. I'm actually a little bit sad that we're yeah. about to end this video because uh, that was a magnificent conversation, boys. There was a reason why I got you two on for this. Uh, phenomenal type stuff. You know, little tidbits that you guys get out of the club. Bit of inside knowledge here and there as well at times which is always very, very handy. Absolutely fantastic stuff, boys. So, uh, H, before I uh, get to uh, Joey's socials and hear about what he's going to be doing on the Centre Bounce coming up, thank you very much for, for coming on for a start, mate. Where can we find you if we're after a bit of a follow on the socials there, buddy? Yeah, I'm on um, Instagram and um, or X or Twitter. <laughs> um, so that... 
So that's my um my 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 full name. So it's at Harry Kitharitis. Um, it's a bit of a long one, um, but you'll find me. You'll see the pick of the goalkeeper, and that's it. Not hard, yeah. to, not hard to find me on social media. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I love the socials. So I support both you boys and um and a few of the other us uh, create uh, create um video creators as well out there. So um great community um have full respect for everyone that does the um content create creating work and um i'm always on there um putting in a few words and you know doing that so yeah you can find Absolutely. me on uh, instagram and 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 then twitter yeah beautiful mate well, i appreciate you coming on we chat uh absolutely on the regular age but uh for the audience yeah. today i think they would have got so much out of this chat and uh, having a bit of a deep dive into your Essendon knowledge. And Joey, thank you as always, mate. Uh, we've done a fair bit of stuff together over the pre-season, probably more on, on the Centre Bounce channel, but mate, it is an absolute pleasure as always, my good friend. Thank you very much for coming on and tell us, what have you and Big J got coming up for us content-wise in the next couple of weeks, mate? Because as I mentioned, you are the hardest working duo in the content creating community. We definitely try to be DR, but uh, you know, we our slogan is we do the hard work so people don't have to over there at the Center Bounce, where obviously we've got our channel that we, we're trying to do our best to pump out content almost on a daily basis. So this week uh, in the lead up to the preseason, the practice games, we've been doing a little preview on every on every club, a bit like what you're doing, but obviously nowhere near as in-depth like this, mainly just some really short form content to sort of sprinkle in amongst our other longer videos like our beginner series videos, which we're continually uh, putting out as well. You featured in one of them. We've had DR on, uh, we've had Joe JD on one of them. We've also had Jaden Poposki, uh, incredible stats man on there. Uh, you can find us at The Center Bounce on YouTube. We, are, we do have socials. We're on, uh, on X or Twitter at bounce underscore center. You can reach out to me personally as well. I just go by Joe. Uh, at chabby underscore joe just your everyday joe who's always happy to have a <laughs> chat about football especially about the dons you hey, are guys. very much more than the average joe my friend let me tell you that and on that note guys thank you very much for joining us i'm sure that you would have stuck to the end because as i said i was just glued to every word that was coming out of these great men's mouths. So stay tuned for the next team preview. Tomorrow night, I'm getting with my man, Maddie, who is an absolute expert when it comes to the dogs, goes down there at training, takes some of his own vision, bit of his own commentary, has his own podcast as well. So very, very excited for him to be joining us tomorrow night. But legends, thank you very much again and look forward to chatting again with you soon. Cheers, Joey. Cheers, H. Take care, guys. Cheers, thank you. Bye. Thank you See you guys. Yeah.